So anyway, people, here you go, and this is Glenn back with another pre-decimal coin video. Today we are looking at the 1946 florin, and this florin is actually a very common coin. It is only 50% silver, and this year, 1946, was the first year in which the silver was reduced from 92.5% to 50%. And that was to pay for the debt that we had because of the Second World War. So this is um, the same design as the coins that were issued since 1938. And it just has the coat of arms. So we have an emu, kangaroo. We have the six states. So then we have the Edwardian crown, florin, which is one tenth of a pound. And we have wattle around here. And on the obverse, we have the effigy of George VI. And this actually had quite a large mintage. And in this grade, you can see the grade is actually quite low. And you can tell because uh, it has a lot of actual wear on the effigy. Although it's not... Uh, you can't actually tell as much as on the coins of George V, which because he had the crown, it's actually a lot easier to tell. But these ones, uh, the actual image is actually a, a lot, well, the impression is a lot thinner. So it's easier to actually tell on this side, on the reverse. So you can see the kangaroo is actually quite worn. Um, you should actually be able to, to see the details of the crown. Uh, the lion, the stars, also the crown on there, so you can tell that that's actually quite worn. And if these arrows are actually filled in, uh, then it's actually very worn. So they've been filled in up the top quite a lot. So that means they've actually been worn quite down. Uh, KG for Cougar Grey, who actually designed the coins. And if we have a look at some information about the coin. So it is 11.31 uh, grams, 28.5 millimeters. So it's only 50% silver, 40% copper, 5% nickel, 5% zinc. Minted in Melbourne. It has a mintage of 23,222,000. So it's actually quite a high mintage. And because after the Second World War, the mintage has generally decreased because um, we had an influx of foreign soldiers and mainly Americans, all from the Americas. And uh, a lot of those coins were left. So I would say this mintage was actually to withdraw the other coins of higher silver quantity from circulation, so to replace previous coins. So readily available in low to mid grades. And if you see the values here, these are pretty much overvalued. So VG, you'll probably be paying about four or five dollars. And uncirculated, probably twenty. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have a look on eBay and see if there's any uncirculated. What price? I would say probably thirty to forty. It's just a guess, or maybe even twenty dollars. But we'll have a look. So here we have some sold items. So this is the newest one, uncirculated, twenty dollars. So oh, well, uh, and here we have almost uncirculated, sixteen dollars. So that's actually probably ah uh, that seller recognised handwriting. So it's probably not even almost uncirculated. So let's have a look at the actual coin. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh yeah, no, it looks like high grade, so yeah, probably is around about that. And then we have a choice on circulate, it's been graded by PCGS, six, MS64, 153, and what was it? That's actually higher than the actual catalogue value, so obviously you get it graded, you're going to get a higher value. So the catalogue values are coins that are not graded. Okay, here we have probably one in fine condition. Eight nine dollars, 
Then we have bulk lot of fake coins. And that sold for close to probably about five dollars each. Another one for less, probably four dollars each. And here we have a clipped one, so don't worry about the grey clipping coins is actually uh, they're not too common so that's actually quite cheap I reckon for a clip coin then we have a ones probably in VG five dollars then we have a lot so when you get a bulk lot here you take the price and you have to divide it by how many coins there are so there's four so it's about 650 each roughly complete set 16 coins wow that would have been something depending on the grade I'm not even going to look at it here we have a one five bucks so that's very nice it's probably the same grade I have oh it only has that video uh, that one oh no this one's actually a bit worn more worn than my coin so that's close to bullion value and here we have some other coins so you can actually get a good price but if you're going to buy a coin grade i showed you probably about five dollars is actually quite good and uh, this year and 1947 have a lot of errors and that you can actually find so what you need to find is actually there's um a lot of die cracks all over the place so on the reverse and the obverse there is also uh, the field date so the four is actually filled what uh, have us rare ones so the a rare one is a die crack rim to rim from Australia through shield so it starts from here through shield and goes to the end so there's a die crack that goes right through it and there's a lot of die cracks everywhere else there's also die crack through the emu large circle figure six in date so you can see these ones are actually so if you turn it upside down the, the six and the nine should actually be reflections of itself but this one's actually pointed and this one's actually rounded so but the circle actually seems to be pretty much the same and if we look on this side you're also looking at a lot of die cracks as well so you've got um missing s in in georgia so that's a very scarce one uh you'll be looking at die cracks through the actual lettering so you've got one that goes straight through here and but just just look for die cracks everywhere that's basically what you need to do and actually buy any coin because any coin can actually have die cracks so that's actually quite nice and the rims on these are generally in pretty good condition even if uh, a lot of this part the flat surface is actually worn as you can see the rims actually quite good and it's actually a nice coin i remember actually getting one of these this is one of my first pre-decimal ones i got from my grandparents and they actually kept a few not too many pre-decimal coins because they actually were not wealthy and they actually used most of the actual money for alcohol yay then later on they had to actually my grandma actually had to go to work to actually Get money to pay for a house or else they would have lost the house so they actually kept a few coins uh, this was probably the one of the highest denominations they kept and i'm talking about also the decimal coins they didn't keep that many decimal decimal coins or banknotes definitely no pre-decimal banknotes they actually just used them all and uh it's just something that actually also got me into collecting coins was when people actually gave me coins Anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching my video and uh, have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Keep up the great hobby that is coin collecting. Thank you and 
goodbye.